name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today, just off the back of the other video I just did about 15 minutes ago, we are going to talk about, uh, it's still on the two stroke um, physics of actually what happens, the flow dynamics and the flow characteristics inside a two stroke engine. So here we've got a transfer port and an exhaust port and we'll put a little sketchy piston in there and at bottom dead centre. Right, so what happens is is that the exhaust scavenging from a two-stroke is seriously ridiculously complicated so actually if we forget that we're not we don't want to start there what we want to where we want to start is right at top dead center uh, not top dead center we want to start here just before we open our exhaust valve so we're right here with our piston and there is a flame front that's traveling through blah 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 it's pushing pressure in every single direction as we all know even up on the head and what have you and your spark plugs up at the top and then what happens is is that um, you know the, it's getting cloudy in there there's a lot of uh, combustion um, products from after you, you know you're actually burning your fuel and your oil which is a bit of a bitch and then what happens is, is obviously your piston gets to the point uh, down here like this and your exhaust port opens like so, get rid of that we're now there and then what happens is is that it doesn't flow you see a lot of these um, diagrams as a GIF um, animation on Wikipedia there's some bits of that that are wrong and I'm going to redo that I'm going to actually make my own version of that GIF very similar to it but I'm going to sh it just show you a few things because there's voids in that it shows you the I'll just put it up now you can see the green going in and then it swirls around and all the rest of it but what it's not showing you there is that that is the fuel air mixture it doesn't show you dilutions it doesn't show you um, pressurized regions you know it should use greens and blues and the greys and what have you and use color intensity to show you where the pressure waves are and so on and so forth the other thing is as well is there's an awful lot of white in that picture right you know the green comes in and then you look at the crankcase below it's white it's clean there's nothing in there that is an issue that is not how it works because white in that in that example would be vacuum would be nothing you know what i mean or it's not and it is air but it's it's just missing out certain things so i am going to do my own version of that but what happens is is now these expanding gases that are still pushing on everywhere will expand out into the exhaust and because the pressure difference between your exhaust which is a large volume versus your cylinder means that the um, exhaust gases will flow this way you know and they'll flow this way quite rapidly just as uh, you know they were um, applying pressure to the piston they are even though the the volume is you know increasing and the pressure is dropping because of the large volume decrease uh, increase um, these gases the energy that they had to apply the force of the piston is the same energy or it's, it's going to be similar to the same energy it is rapidly falling but it's going to have it's going to have a lot of energy and it goes whoosh, straight out your exhaust and it can get to quite really quite high velocities but you've got to remember that a gas gases don't it's not a cloud of cotton balls it's it doesn't move over there and move over there, it always just spreads out. It just becomes thinner. That's what it does. It's gases. It just becomes thinner, you know, it just becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. And you can have higher concentration gases in one region, but they will then, you know, have an equilibrium and fill out. So basically what you end up with is you end up with, just before the transfer port opens, a smog. And a smog that has a general direction that is going outside, out into your exhaust. However, as soon as you get to this point and you open your transfer port, like so, and obviously this has been pressurised as this transfer port by the piston coming down, decreasing the, uh, decreasing the volume, increasing the pressure inside the crankcase. What's going to ha happen is, is that your transfer gases are going to come out and they are going to start to fill and push past this stuff because they are now at a higher pressure because the pressure has been dropped an awful lot because everything's just pissed out the exhaust but this is a problem 
Number one is the general flow in this combustion chamber is this way, is this way. And some of this incoming charge is gonna just basically follow the flow in a sense because this is just a much a low pressure region here, outside here, as up here is. So it, it just basically does, not like a, like a split, it just expands into all of it. But what it does do is it'll trap a region up here and it'll squish it. It'll squish it until the pressure until the pressure equalises. It will squish this region, and this is uh, exhaust gases. You just squish your exhaust gases here. Now you see these pictures of it going in here and flowing out. Now that's a uh, cross flow engine, which is what they used to do back in the day. And they used to actually be, have better volumetric efficiency because of that. But then your piston was heavier, you couldn't rev it as high, and other issues all related to that. And your combustion chambers were a bit weird shaped because they had to dodge this fucking big deflector on top of this piston um, but you are going to have some exhaust gases in here so then all this charge comes in it does kind of have a circulatory motion some of it that goes up here and smashes into all this other exhaust gases and all the rest of it uh, squashes this up here and then as soon as it starts to slow down it can then um, change direction and it starts to flow out now obviously your bottom dead centre your pistons come up and your piston now shuts off this transfer port. But before we get to that bit, when your piston's at the bottom here, the fact that this exhaust is a massively large volume and it is a lower pressure region, that pressure wave is on its way back, but it still is uh, lower pressure because everything's flowing to fill that exhaust pipe because outside is lower pressure than all of it. So that's what it's all trying to get for. It's the influence of the outside world. So then what happens is, is you get this kind of, uh, a kind of cross flow thing where all these transfer gases do try and push out and, uh, you know, push out all your exhaust and all of this, hence the scavenging. But now we're getting to the point where the exhaust port is about, the uh, transfer port's about to flow, close off. Um, these gases still have a momentum, so they come in and they add just a tiny bit. In a sense, it's almost like the pressure wave that's coming back. They add a tiny bit of um, extra, so to speak, a bit, a tiny bit extra, but it's always going to be lower than your 100cc because of these squash gases, your exhaust gases that are up here. Then what happens is, is your uh, piston, wrong colour, your piston shuts the door on the transfer port. It shuts the door on the transfer port, and then two things happen here. What happens is, is your exhaust, your pressure wave is on its way back now. It's in a hurry on its way back to shut the door. You now have obviously most of your exhaust gases gone, apart from this little cloud that's up here. And this is one of the problems with the volumetric efficiency of a two-stroke, is the fact is you, you can nip away at this and you can nip away, but there's always going to be this smog, this cloud up there that is being held against this wall because the transfer pots are coming up and whacking it, they're holding it up there. It will cause some of it to squish out and it does dilute an awful lot, don't get me wrong. But you're now filling this, you're filling this, you're filling this, but there's still this flow outside like this. The piston is coming up, so in a, in a sense the piston's like squeezing a tube of toothpaste, it's got to come out somewhere and your tube, tube of toothpaste neck is your exhaust port because that is the only way out. So as the piston starts to come up and you shut your transfer port off, it actually increases the amount of leakage out of your um, exhaust port. And this is why the back pressure from your exhaust, this pressure wave that's coming back up, is so important. Because you might have, um, you know, an awful lot of this flowing out, like so. And then this pressure wave comes and basically just kicks it back in, like so, or it stops it, that's the problem. It doesn't necessarily, it has to stop the flow and then start accelerating it the other way. And the pressure wave, it is a pressure wave, it's not really atoms so much coming back, it's a density, it's a car jam. But it does, it does help push some of this, the stuff that only just left before this exhaust pot closes. So. The other problem is as well is the flow is going out and in certain instances at certain RPM 
it can actually leave an area um, just ever so slightly because of the momentum of all this flowing out because the piston is now squeezing out like toothpaste it can actually leave it's like you know it's like squeezing a bottle it's like squeezing a bottle and then it popping back out you've done that it's a bit different with this because it's it's actually to do with the, the strength of the aluminium but it's like doing that it's like the pop back so what happens is you can have a slight and it's at certain rpms you have a slight low pressure in here which helps suck some of this back in but also sucks a tiny bit of the exhaust gases in there'll be a, a fucking perfect sweet spot where it works perfectly and i'm talking about maybe you know let's just say it's 8646.17 rpm it'll be like that that's the perfect tune and it's right there and then and then as soon as you have a bit more carbon it's gone off again you're not going wildly off you know you'll have the efficiency of it like this there's your top number there and then you have a band you know and the scale of this is fuck all you know it's um this will be 8655 and this will be 8240 it'll be something like that so the, the bump really isn't that much because you like I say, you've got to look at the scaling and all the rest of it. However, you've got the trap gases here. They're only they've been diluted. You know, they've been diluted to buggery and all the rest of it. It is low. There'll be some of the exhaust gases here, especially at lower RPM. They'll sneak their way back in because the exhaust pipe is usually tuned to be in the power band, and that's usually at quite a high RPM range. And then obviously your piston comes up and blocks them all off. So there is the cross flow. Um, aspect to all this and what will happen is is that your this is how they can get ever so slightly over a hundred percent filling to a degree and this is the thing people say you can get over a hundred percent filling the pressure in the cylinder is not an indication of how well you have fucking filled that cylinder but the simple fact is so a lot of it can be or not a lot of it but a percentage of it between two three four five percent will be exhaust gases and that's not what you can burn. So what happens is, is as this, just say the piston's a bit lower, let's just say it's down here somewhere. What happens is, is you can have a, an overflow um, event happen. But it only happens at certain RPM. What happens is, is you have your incoming charge coming in, it fills all this, great, and then it pisses back out. Right? And then what you do is, when you shut it all off, just before the exhaust port is closed off you have now filled this cylinder and pissed maybe 10 percent out into or maybe 20 percent out into your um expansion chamber you know your exhaust and then that comes in and then that pushes that back in that pushes back in so now in here you could possibly have um 120 percent and then you could have uh, it'd be 120% when you record it, but the problem is, is 15% uh, of that, 15% of that is most likely exhaust gases because you've wedged a lot of it in here, and obviously when this pressure uh, pulse comes back, it all intermixes. It's not just cut and dry. It's absolutely brilliant. Now you can tune a two-stroke, so you can get higher efficiencies um, of cylinder filling. So briefly. Is this supercharging then? If you can get higher than 100% Matt, isn't this supercharging? No, because this only happens at certain RPM. People go, that ain't good enough, that's a bullshit excuse. Ram air. Ram air on four strokes is basically using the velocity of the air in the outside world to try and force pressurise your manifold. They do not call that supercharging. How do I know they don't call that supercharging? The fucking dick and the balls is a supercharged one litre four stroke engine and then they give you dyno numbers for without and with ram air that is not the, the, the R1 has ram air the R6 has ram air the GSXR I think has had ram air as well the fact of the matter is they do not call that supercharging that thing is an excellent example there we call that supercharging oh it has ram air as well using the velocity of a flow to better fill your cylinder is not supercharging in any respect right you can all argue the toss as much as you fucking want this isn't an argument suzuki and honda and yamaha and ducati and all the rest and triumph harley davidson even are not arguing the toss 
You lot are all arguing the toss in the fucking comments. I've told you the way it is just because it's what they've defined it. Kawasaki has said, is that supercharged? Yeah. What about the ZX-12? No, of course it's fucking not. But the ZX-12 has RAM, eh? That's why I'm eh? Shut your fucking mouth. The fact of the matter is, is the... This, and you know, people say, oh yeah, but the, I said it's a bolt-on. What I mean is a bolt-on to the process. It is exterior to the process. That supercharger in the H2R is exterior to the entire process. Engines exist without that. It's called most bike engines, right? If you've integrated it into it or not, it doesn't make it... You know, it doesn't make it um, a supercharged or not. It's quite simple. We talk about forced induction. If it's inside the engine, inside this crankcase, it is not forced induction. Without it, it wouldn't work. So it is part of its natural cycle. Fuck's sake. One of the problems we've been talking about for quite a, lot, quite a while now on this channel is how to not use crankcase, crankcase breathing. The word being breathing, not fucking, you know, supercharging. It's just... It, it's part of the system. The exhaust, the expansion exhaust using back pressure and pressure waves in a two stroke application is a way that we can recover things. Just like using ram air, or just like using power valves, or just like using power X up systems that Yamaha use in four strokes. No one has ever called them supercharging. No one has done that. Either turbo or just mechanical driven superchargers. It's not what we call it. It's as simple as that. And think about what we're saying here. We've got two types of superchargers. Superchargers that don't use turbines are called mechanical superchargers. There is nothing mechanical about this. Yeah? This is basically all to do with geometry, physics, and basically building it properly, making it more efficient, optimising it. The exhaust is just an optimization system. Just like the power valve is an optimization system, just like balancing or controlling or designing the right crankcase relationship to your cylinder. Just like porting in the right places, having your port timing to work at a particular RPM. Right? It is not supercharging, it is not turbo supercharging, it's none of it. People can wang on as much as they want. There isn't an argument about this. Everyone who says, but the two stroke is supercharged, is fucking wrong. It's as simple as that. The only way, what, like I say, like I said before in the other video, what happens if you put a roots blower on a, on a two-stroke? You go and get your, you know, you go and get your RD500 and you put a supercharger on it. What are you going to call it then? A supercharger supercharged? It's not supercharged. It's part of its natural process. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? Ports are designed. You know, we have a valve overlap with four strokes. You can't call that supercharging, even though we are trying to literally um, use the exhaust gases, one for scavenging, but number two is we actually use cross flow in that respect to try and fill, um, you know, we use velocity. We use velocity in the manifold, we use velocity in the runners to try and fill that manifold a bit more so we can increase our volumetric efficiency above 100%, right? The fact of the matter is, is we have forced induction and natural aspiration. If your engine breathes this way, then it is natural. If you have a supercharger and it'll run without it, then if you have a, a mechanism and you can move it, remove it without it, then it is not. It's not part of the process. It's just as simple as that. You know what I mean? I know people are going to get all wingy and wangy about this. Great, I love reading stupid comments and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>